Hi everyone, my name is Kosha Joubert. I currently work as the Executive Director of the Global Ecolage Network. And I'm delighted um, that you're interested and have clicked on this video to learn more about Jen and our strategy at the moment. So I'm going to share a PowerPoint with you. Just give me one moment. Um, there you go. Ooh, there you are. So now you should be able to see this. And I want to share with you a, a presentation that I also brought to one of our core funders, the Gaia Trust Foundation in Denmark, just to report on our work in the past years and especially our strategy for the coming years. Um, Gaia Trust has been supporting the Global Ecovillage Network since our beginnings in 1995 and this is a time where we're um, slowly winding down those funds and replacing them with other income streams as Gaia Trust is coming to the end of its funding streams within. So I want to share with you about how the term of regeneration and the map of regeneration that is at the heart of Ecovillage um, represents our response to the state of climate emergency that the world faces at the moment and how Jen is currently scaling up our work to respond to this situation in the world. So while many countries are at the moment speaking about um, acknowledging the state of climate emergency, I would say about half of our villages are already radically experiencing, ex existentially experiencing that state of emergency. And it's also this, um, the situation that we find ourselves in at the moment that eco-villages are coming up and have come up over the past decades as a response. So Jen today, as many of you will know, is a very rich network with five big regional networks in Asia, Africa, Latin America, North America, and Europe, and also with a big youth network that we call NextGen. All of us come together until under the mantle of the global Ecovillage Network, and therefore conversations about cross-cultural conversation, decolonization, how to collaborate across all the rich diversity and wealth that such a network brings sits at the heart of our work. As well, um, while eco-villages are the core energy that we um, connect with, the kind of projects that we work with actually um, cross quite a bandwidth of strata. So starting from eco-citizens, um, the individuals, in Gen we say that one of the most underutilized resources we have at the moment on the planet is the good intention of citizens and our wish to be part of the solution. So in Gen we show pathways to human beings all around the planet for how we can walk our talk and start filling, uh, fulfilling our our mission really here on the planet to be guardians of life to be protectors of life so showing people pathways to do that this is is really important and we we love to work with all the eco projects around the world that do just that spreading what we call eco village lifestyles these can be permaculture projects greening schools um, eco tourism projects um, educational centers projects that spread eco-village lifestyles. Above that, you can see eco-communities. These are smaller communities with less than 20 adults. We have eco-villages beyond 20 adults. We come to eco-cities. Auroville, for instance, calls itself an eco-city. Some of the big eco-villages like Gede Chantier have seven th more than 7,000 inhabitants. So that borderline between eco-village and eco-city is a bit fluent, um, but we also speak about eco-regions, whole areas where networks of villages come together to transition, um, urban neighborhoods, and in China at the moment the government is speaking of a post-industrial eco-civilization. In Gen, over 
all these years, um, since 1995, we have had a constant creation of knowledge, bringing together all the networks of wonderful projects on the ground where solutions are being created in laboratories for future um, culture or healing biotopes. And this knowledge is distilled through the national networks, the regional networks, intergen. At the heart of our distillation at the moment sits the map of regeneration, which I'll share a little bit more. We share this with our partners, governments at the United Nations, academia, corporate partners, and inspiration and a response and a feedback flows back down. Also, the tools that have been distilled flow back down to these wonderful places of inspiration on the ground, where again, we learn from the eco-villages on the ground. So it's a circular movement of knowledge through flow throughout all of our regions. And this is one of the outcomes. We have different um, ways of portraying this, but I just want to let you see um, the map of regeneration with the four areas of regeneration, um, social, culture, ecology, and economy. And at the center, we have integral design or regenerative design. Um, again, the eco-village principles that you can see here are principles that we have learned about um, as we watch what is it that is the pattern at the heart of the very diverse eco-villages around the world. And the eco-village principles allow us to map across all eco-villages, traditional, intentional, urban, rural, how they are doing how they're designing themselves in the different eco-village principles, the different areas of regeneration. And we have many different eco-villages in the world that start from a particular area of regeneration, um, say ecology or social or culture or economy. And over time, we see that when eco-villages follow the process of natural evolution, they will grow to encompass all of these areas. So what are our objectives? What is our strategy at the moment? Um, what will help Jen flourish over the coming three years? And I'll start just by showing the seven objectives which are at the heart of how we work. So um, at the core is to cultivate relationships of cooperation and mutual support throughout Jen. And this means also understanding that um, climate change is not an abstraction it's our communities that are being hit it's our brothers and sisters across the globe um, decolonization is not an abstraction it's something that we all need to engage with especially those that are more privileged um, as we learn how do we truly empower each other across all divides showcasing the positive impact of eco-village projects worldwide, but then also using the showcasing to inspire more individuals and communities to participate in these lifestyles so that we can spread eco-village lifestyle through consultancy and education, um, building the alliances with other NGOs, but also with governments, with the UN, with the European Union, that will help us fulfill our goals and scale up eco-village implementation to help achieve the sustainable development goals and the climate change agreements. So we're now at a place where we can show governments how we can support them in the fulfillment of their agreements to implement these. And lastly, how do we do all this while also developing economic abundance? And in 2018, this is just a small um, report on 2018, we did really well. Um, and this is not the turnover of GEN as a whole. So each region in GEN has its own budget, its own turnover. So this is only for the global organization, which is currently a charitable trust that is um, situated in Scotland. But funds to all regions flow through this global eco-village network, Scottish Charity. Um, so it's, it's an important driver in the whole network. So 
while we celebrate how close we are to our targets in all three um, areas that we focus on, donations, funded projects, and earned income. Um, we also know that these are actually not the final, final numbers. They're close to being the final numbers, but we will have the final numbers just in a few weeks. So, and still it's interesting to see what clarity of attention, how it can attract reality. So coming to the first, Objective, cultivate relationships of cooperation and mutual support throughout Gen. We just want to start by acknowledging these are some of the photographs of board members, especially, um, but also some of the key people that are involved in different parts of Gen. Um, yeah, and acknowledging the work that all of the people throughout the networks are doing on the ground voluntary work that is being put into the network on all levels so thank you so much for being a part of this or maybe being interested to become a part of this also staying with the same objective you know the um we work together across all regions um and across all national networks and eco-villages, where we celebrate the unique expression of each part in the network, while at the same time working to find a cohesive language, a knowledge alliance, which will help us to become more recognizable uh, and ease government's engagement with us. So we see that each regional um, network, for instance, brings its own flavor, its own culture to the whole, and the, this, the core's gen amalgamates these different voices, these different cultures. It's a constant process, a flow. Part of what we are um, keen on focusing on is empowering and capacitating each circle um, within gen. So working on, on um, capacity building and developmental um, organizational development throughout gen. Moving to the second objective, showcasing the positive impact of eco-village projects worldwide. You know, this is at the heart and wherever I travel, it's just um, people are so grateful again and again. Right now, at the moment, I'm actually in the beautiful country of New Zealand, Aotearoa, where I've just offered some trainings. Um, we've had some of the elders of the Maori communities join us. Before I was in Australia, where we had some of the elders of the Aborigines, the First Nations, join us. And it's, it's deeply touching to hear how they find that the tools of GEN, the map of regeneration that sits at the heart actually speaks to them and speaks to what they have always done and what they have always known and how easy they find it to translate the language, to adapt it for their communities. So we are, we currently have around 500 solutions in our Ecovillage Solution Library. We're really moving this up. We're inviting you to engage with this and the hope that this network, but also the solutions that we spread, brings around the world is huge. We currently link, can show our link to over 6,000, exactly 6,031 projects, communities, and eco-villages. More than 2,900 of these are actually um, show up as an individual, um, project in our database the rest are linked to a core hub like say sarvadaya in sri lanka which then has a whole network of eco villages around it or redis and Gedi chantier in northern senegal which then has a whole network of eco villages connecting to it but of the 6031 communities we have their geographical data we know who the contact person is we know which is the hub that they are linking in through so reaching out to more and more communities, and we know that our networks encompass many more communities. But also, and this is a big thing that we're working on this, on this year, is to increase um, the precision of our eco-village impact assessment. So we did a first impact assessment in 2017. These are some of the outcomes that you can read, read here. This kind of numbers are crucial when we show governments how we can support them. 
And this year, um, we're currently on the way to, on track to receive some funding to actually have a very enhanced impact assessment report by the end of the year that will cover 100 eco-villages worldwide and that we will be bringing to COP25 in Chile um, to showcase on quite high forums in that United Nations Climate Conference. So inspiring individual and community to participate in eco-village lifestyles, one of our, our strongholds our beautiful um, potential here is our Gen Ambassadors. We have 185 Gen Ambassadors currently. More people are joining every day. These are people that know Gen deeply enough and apply to step into this role to represent Gen in their nations and their countries at conferences, speaking to local and national authorities, bringing out the information. This year for the first time and we prepared for that in 2018 in February, 1 to 10 February, we had the first Gen Online Summit, Climate Change and Consciousness, the Power of Community, where we reached out to close to 8,000 individual participants and 145 hubs of at least 10 participants each. So beyond 10,000 participants in total. And also our followers on social media are growing quickly. So this is just part of our outreach in the world. And Jen has been working um, after birthing Gaia Education, which has taken on a life of its own and is working in very close collaboration with Jen. Jen has also gone on to form another branch, Jen Education and Jen Consultancy, understanding that our communities need very particular training, short trainings. So while we continue to work with the Ecovillage Design Education hand in hand with Gaia Education, we're also developing a global learning journey um, with core tools. We're spreading this with more trainers being trained up in the gen training of trainers, consultants of all kinds being recognized across all regions and starting to deliver gen consultancy and this is becoming one of our main sources of income while also supporting us to fulfill our mission in the world yeah and we know that um, at this time what is needed is to radically scale up um, eco-village presence we see the wonderful impact that Jen has, while many are um, speaking about needing to recognize climate um, catastrophe, climate emergency that is upon us, um, the solutions that are currently being advocated are only coming partly, only a small way towards where we need to go um, in order to really um, protect the future of our children and their grandchildren to protect life on this planet, we need to completely transform our human presence on the planet from destructive to regenerative, taking up the mantle, the true mantle of who we are, guardians of life, coming back to protect the rights of the earth. Um, understand that our duty of care means that we need to live regenerative lifestyles wherever we are. So we're working hand in hand with all those other organizations around the world, Transition Town, Permaculture Network, all of them that you can see here, 45 different partnerships, and we're currently deepening um, the quality of these partnerships. We also have more and more MOUs signed with governments. Um, I was this year in Sierra Leone, Morocco, the Gambia, Zimbabwe, many other countries we've been asked in Scotland, Spain, Germany, to support transition of traditional communities in Europe. So um, working through advocacy to reach out and invite more governments to work with us as we um, start scaling up eco-village programs and implementing eco-village programs to help governments in their fulfillment of the sustainable development goals and the climate agreements. So we're moving 
towards more and more places in the world where gen networks are um, involved in emergency responses, rebuilding communities after disaster, but also increasing community resilience in the face of climate change, bringing eco-village eco design to refugee camps. We're working with more and more green schools, starting in Southern Africa, where we're already through our, the permaculture networks and our partners there reaching out to 600 schools. Gen is itself becoming engaged in more and more greening schools for whole community transformation. Um, we're learning from all the ways in which intentional communities have been set up and bringing those tools to the Ecovillage incubation program, supporting all the new Ecovillage um, initiatives that are starting up. Just here in New Zealand, just last week, I met at least 10 new Ecovillage initiatives. At the moment in Denmark, we have 50 new Ecovillage initiatives. This is growing rapidly. We're also working more and more with urban Ecovillages. The handbook on this program is coming out very soon. And our heart piece is the Ecovillage Development Program, um, supporting governments to transition traditional villages, indigenous villages, to um, be recognized and to become Ecovillages. So the Ecovillage Development Program, scaling up Ecovillage. And we have a movie on that also on our YouTube channel. So go and check that out. So how are we going to move towards economic abundance? And um, we can see the growth that, is, that has happened since 2015. Um, we are looking forward to two more years of full funding coming from Gaia Trust, which is then lessening from 2021 forwards. That funding will become less. So you can see how the green part of these columns is lessening. But we're also seeing that from year to year, um, the funded projects that Jen is able to engage with increase also as our turnover increases. So we have funding from the Scottish government, the European Commission, the German Foreign Ministry, climate funds, and more and more also the green climate funds and others. We're also increasing our revenue from donations and earned revenue, social entrepreneurship. So we're seeing how we're growing um, the other parts of our revenue income stream as the revenue from the Gaia Trust Funds lessens in the coming years. And very specifically, if you look at our targets for 2021, these are quite conservative, but very realistic. Um, you see that our funded projects are increasing. We're um, really focusing in on Friends of Gen, but also um, inviting other donors, um, especially in the River of Life project, which is women supporting women. We're hoping to have a similar project soon for men supporting men, but at the woman, at the moment, it's this women supporting women program. Please again, go and check out on our website to learn more about this program, but also increasing our earned income. We're, we're on track to be able to offer career through GEN, so that eco-village development is no longer a weekend activity, something for middle class, but something that we do as a career. So not only focusing in on social entrepreneurship as we set up or transition eco-villages, but also becoming GEN ambassador, GEN trainer, GEN consultant, going on this global learning journey to build your career. And this is why we're doing it. These are just some examples, some of the beautiful examples of ecosystem restoration that have happened in eco-villages over the past decades. Here you can see Auroville, where a beautiful um, forest was cut down to leave a desert and has now been replenished. Sekhem in Egypt, it's the same building in the top photograph and the bottom photograph. Um, this is what we can do when we really listen and work with nature instead of working against. When we come back to, a, to be settled into the web of life, when we come home to place, to community, when we learn again also from the indigenous ways of life, 
combining those with the in innovative technologies. So Tamera here is the next example in a rapidly, um, rapidly desertifying Portug Portugal um, building lakes to make sure that the rainwater can replenish the, the water aquifers in the land and slowly um, rebuild local climates of a different kind. And another example from CASA, a Latin American networks, Brazil. Yeah, so eco-villages around the world are wonderful places of inspiration, often far beyond what we think. Um, the eco-village of Finthorn actually offers space of inspiration to around 7,500 visitors each year. And many of our eco-villages have that many people streaming through. Um, each of these people takes a seed back with them as they go back out into the world and bring that seed to their communities, their organizations, the people that they love. So the seeds that we spread are big and that all of those seeds together um, make up Jen's theory of change. So following our strategy, growing from these eco-village networks that are regenerating our world, working with the tools, the shared language, the distilled language that becomes more and more recognizable. We become able to inspire, to educate, to advocate, to consult, and to truly, by scaling up eco-village development, eco-village incubation, green schools, regeneration after emergencies, and urban areas, urban neighborhoods, we are truly able to transform our human presence to reduce the threat and impact of climate change and build sustainable futures. So just the same theory of change shown in a different way, honoring, celebrating the eco-village projects on the ground, which is where the real knowledge is constantly being created, a never ending stream, the creation of solutions, the distilling and showcasing of those, inspiring and educating more and more people as we advocate and partner to implement more eco-village programs and then consult and implement more and more transformation. So this is Jen at the moment. Thank you so much for being part of our networks, interested in our networks. And we look forward to a deepened collaboration to work hand in hand to transform our human presence on the planet at this time. Thank you for being part of us. <laughs>